Options are often labeled as complex investments, and some investors may interpret complex to mean riskier than other types of investments. But that's not necessarily the case. Consider that it might be perceived as risky to invest in a company that's announcing earnings results after hours, or is testing a new medical drug that costs them millions of dollars to research. In most cases, an investor assumes risk whenever they invest money. It's just a matter of degree. So naturally, finding ways to mitigate risk is an important part of investing. And one of the ways to do that is to use options positions as a hedge. Think of hedging as an insurance policy to mitigate risk. You enter a contract, pay a premium, and in exchange, receive some sort of protection or compensation if something adverse happens during a set period. With options, the most common type of hedge is buying a put. It grants the buyer the right to sell the underlying stock at the strike price instead of the current market price. Let's look at an example with our option buyer, Jack. To keep things simple, this example will not include any commissions or fees. Jack recently inherited his mother's investment account, which holds 2,000 shares of ABC One Corp. They're currently trading at $50 per share. Now let's say the owner of ABC One Corp is under investigation for criminal activity, and the court will deliver its ruling in a week. Jack is worried about the large number of shares he holds in the inherited account because he can't sell them. The account is currently frozen due to some missing paperwork that names him the beneficiary. Being the savvy option trader that he is, Jack places a trade in his own separate account, buying 20 puts on ABC One Corp with a strike price of $50 that expires in a month. He pays $3 per contract for a total cost of $6,000. A week goes by and the court finds the owner of ABC One Corp guilty, causing the stock to drop to $40. Luckily for Jack, his puts permit him to sell the shares for $50 a piece when exercised for a total of $100,000. His net proceeds are $94,000 after subtracting the $6,000 cost he paid for the options. So what would have happened if Jack didn't hedge the 2,000 shares of ABC One Corp? Well, if we assume the stock is still trading at $40 per share when he's given access to his mother's account, he could sell them for a total of $80,000. In this scenario, buying the puts saves Jack from losing a net $14,000. But what happens if the owner is found innocent and the stock doesn't tumble? Jack can let the options expire worthless and he would lose the $6,000 it costs to buy them. Hedging can be costly, especially if you need to do it for a long period of time. In our example with Jack, he only anticipated being locked out of his mother's account for about a week. So buying puts with an expiration date more than a month out would be a waste of money. And ideally, Jack would buy ones that expire in a couple of weeks if those options are available. Hedging a position in a single stock can be fairly straightforward, but you can also hedge multiple positions or even your entire portfolio. So that's the long and short of hedging with options. If you haven't caught our lessons on using options to speculate and generate income, make sure to check them out. And if you have, then let's get down to business trading options on WebBroker in our next lesson.